Dirt shows its versatility again as they move from the permanent road courses to the temporary circuit on the runways of an airport. Cleveland is wide open and that invites bravery. It's flat, it's rough, it's fast. Everywhere is opportunity. The championship fight is close as rookie Juan Montoya arrives here with a slim points lead. Six more drivers are within striking distance. The champ cars are ready. Cleveland rocks. From the Burke Lakefront Airport, Cleveland, Ohio, on the shores of Lake Erie, it's the CART Grand Prix of Cleveland. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Paul Page with Parker Johnstone. That's right. We said airport. It's an active airport all but this one weekend of the year when they turn it into a race course. That means the surfaces are runways, taxiways, and some asphalt that the racers have laid down. It makes for a very, very rough surface, and where those different sections join, it can be very bumpy. And as we can see, it is very bumpy. It really punishes the drivers and the cars. The suspension, gearbox, and transmissions really take a beating. That could be a factor in today's race. The cars are in the air sometimes almost as much as they're on the ground. They are low-flying aircraft here at this airport circuit. Rookie sensation Juan Montoya's aggressive driving style makes him one to watch today. On the wide open course in Cleveland, he has the pole. Alongside is Jill DeFerrin. DeFerrin went 50 races before winning last Sunday in Portland. His last previous win was right here at Cleveland in 1996. Also keep in mind that Jill DeFerrin is the all-time lap leader here at Cleveland. And right next door, Juan Montoya with his fourth pole position of the season. He says, this might be my new favorite racetrack. And that's because the style that he likes to muscle the car around the racetrack. He also said, you know, there's only one wall to hit here, and I hit that on Friday. In the second row, it's Michael Andretti and Brian Herta. Now, Cleveland's wide open runways suit Michael Andretti's hard charging style, but he has only one victory here. Michael Andretti was in the hunt all the way up to the qualifying. Unfortunately, he had an eight minute penalty he had to serve. He had to sit out the last eight minutes of qualifying. As a result, he had to watch first Juan Montoya and then Jill DeFerrin go right past him in first and second. He didn't like losing the pole, but he didn't mind losing second the position. That's because he says if there's a second best place to start on this track, it's the inside of the second row. On the third row, it's Roberto Moreno and Patrick Carpentier, his best start on a road course. Row four is Greg Moore. Paul Tracy will start on the outside. In the fifth row, Mauricio Guzman and Dario Franchitti. Five podium finishes for Franchitti have given him the championship hunt, but he's still searching for his first win of this season. In row six, it's Christian Fittipaldi and Adrian Fernandez. The seventh row, Cristiano D'Amata and Al Unser Jr. Eighth row, Jimmy Vassar, P.J. Jones is outside. On the inside of row nine, Elio Castro Nevis, Scott Pruitt is to the outside. In row 10, Tony Kanaan and Michelle Jordan Jr. The 11th row, Mimo Gidley and Max Pappas. In row 12, Tarso Marquez and Robbie Gordon. Row 13, Richie Hearn with Walter Salas on the outside. And alone in the 14th row, Luis Garcia Jr. We'll be back with the green flag right after this from the Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, Ohio. At the Burke Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, the field rolls now toward a green flag. This course just a little over two miles long, and the fuel range will come in at about 28 laps. 100 laps is the scheduled distance, 210 miles. Plenty of onboard cameras here for you. And Paul, the drivers face a very bumpy track, but it's very wide. It's 150 feet wide in sections. It's difficult to find visual references because it's so flat, it's hard to know exactly where you are. But once you figure this track out, the drivers say you can get into a great rhythm. And this always produces great racing and a lot of action. And that is a new helmet for Juan Montoya in car number four, our pole sitter. There is also a threat of rain. Some they say that thunderstorm cells are as close as 30 minutes away. So that combined with the rough circuit, it's going to make for a very interesting, if not long, afternoon. Keep in mind, Paul, these cars have all been set up in the dry. They're very stiff. They're very low. If it goes to a rain race, it'll really be interesting, as bumpy as this circuit is. 
Montoya on your left has the pull. Jill DeFerrin alongside. Very nice alignment here. A chicane before they actually come onto the pit straight and the start finish line. And they can begin to accelerate at about this point. Very nice alignment off the corner. Green, green, green. And here we go. Montoya comes well ahead. Into the corner. Michael comes up on the inside, challenging to Farron. With one exception, everybody threw clean. Brian Herta spun it around, but even he is able to get back into the fight. Michael challenges to Farron. Paul Tracy with a great move at the start of the race, Paul. He moved up from eighth place. It looks like he's now running in fourth there. It was a brilliant series of moves coming out of one into the sections two, three. Paul Tracy around Moreno and now works at the back of Andretti. Oh, Max Pappas gets very wide into the corner, uses it to his advantage. Almost starts a little too early back into traffic. Both Allens are junior and Tarso Marquez in the Lola for this race. And coming to the conclusion of the first lap now with Montoya in the lead. DeFerrin in second place, but Andretti being challenged now by Paul Tracy. Battle is back there at third. Carpentier comes into that fight too. We can see also going down into turn one, Dario Franchitti getting around the inside of Mauricio Guzman with a good move under braking. So Andretti, Tracy, Moreno, Carpentier, and Franchitti. Michel Jourdain Jr. had a quick spin off course, kept the engine going, and is moving back into the fight. Here comes Montoya, driving for the target Chip Ganassi team. There's DeFerrin, here's Michael, and here is that battle. And when Michel Jourdain spun, he clipped one of the tire piles here. They're staying green, but that appears to me to be right in the middle of the line. You can see, Paul, it is right off the apex there. He dragged it right into the middle of the track. The problem is this course is so wide, it's good for passing, but it also sucks drivers into situations and opportunities that they might not normally take, so it creates its own problems. We'll see how Montoya handles this and the rest of the field as they wind through. Turn number four here. Paul Tracy got around to Michael Andretti. Now Moreno starts to work on Andretti. Carpentier closes in on Moreno. Then Franchitti. So Paul Tracy now taking a shot, looking for DeFerrin in second place. Look at how rough this track is. Look at those bumps. But despite all of that, everybody seems to love the circuit. The drivers, the fans, the pit crews, everybody loves coming here. Elio Castro Neves slows down. Could this be another mechanical for Castro Neves? They've been so close so many times this year, Paul. They've struggled this weekend, but there are four or five races that this team could have won. Well, he's going to limp around and make it to the pits. Jan Vikas, any indication what's up? Yes, the team has said that he has a damaged nose, that he may have had contact with something out on the racetrack. We don't know what it is. It could have even been what we saw on the racetrack on the inside, but he's going to come in. They're going to put a new nose on that Lola. Well, whatever the damage was, was not at least obvious to me as he came around the corner. But whatever it is, it's important enough for them to make the change. There's Carpentier, Franchitti sitting behind him, then Mauricio Guzman and Greg Moore. This is back running sixth on down the order. Patrick Carpente, Paul, with his best road course performance to date for this team and for his kart series uh, 
experience so far. He's very pleased with that sixth place qualifying. Back to the pitch, Jan. Paul, you can see the front of the car that there's nothing wrong with Helio Castro's bodywork or nose. In fact, they go straight back to the engine, and we can see some smoke, so it could be possibly another Mercedes-related problem for Helio Castro Neves. The team thought on the way in, he said on the radio, that I had nose damage. Obviously, that's not the case. They've got engine damage. Well, we've seen them pull that calling off far too many times. You see Elio Castro Nevis reach up, push his transmit button so he can talk to his crew while they're working at the back of the car. Hogan Racing Crew has prepared this car very, very well. Casper Vandershoot and Elio Castro Nevis have been performing extremely well during the first half of the season, and yet they've had another engine-related problem, Paul. Picking up on the battle now with Mauricio Guzelman as Guzman is being chased by Greg Moore at the front. It is still Montoya. He is leading to Farron by two and a third second. Paul Tracy has moved up to third. Welcome to the Burke Lake Front Airport in Cleveland. The cart held the start of the race as long as they could. We're only on lap six. And Juan Montoya, who is the pole sitter, is the leader of the race. You look back to second place, Jill DeFerrin. Now we'll take you back and show you exactly what you have missed in these first six laps of the run. So our first Toyota Spotlight focuses on the start of the race. With Montoya jumping into the lead, Jill DeFerrin sweeping way outside. And it was a good start. The only problem was one with Brian Herta, who spun quickly, but he got restarted. The good news in the midst of all of that was that Paul Tracy started eighth and now runs third. The bad news is that Elio Castro Nevis is out of the run and in the pits right now, waiting to see if they can repair something in the engine compartment. Let's go to Jan Bikas. Well, the situation for Elio Castro Neves, believe it or not, a boost line came off. They simply came into pits, took off the engine cover, reconnected a line. He is back out on the racetrack. That's just incredible luck for Elio Castro Neves. What, one, two, three races in a row. We're watching this battle between Michael Andretti and Paul Tracy, Rick DeBruel. Well, I just want you to know that apparently as they were battling just a moment ago, Paul Tracy passed Michael Andretti, but apparently was under a local yellow at that corner. As a result, Tracy is now going to have to move back around, let Andretti take the position, and that's exactly what has happened. So this race is underway. We have had no full course caution, and here is the field summary at the moment with the best move in the race being Paul Tracy. Dario Franchitti started in 10th place. He's now, as you can see, up to 7th place. And Montoya has a 3.2-second lead over Jill DeFerrin. The big battle is back at 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Andretti, Tracy, and Moreno. When you take a look in the upper left-hand corner, in the parentheses is where they started in this field. A big move by Tracy. Andretti out to the far east end. Tracy in pursuit, so is Moreno. Moreno in what we understand to be his last ride in this car. The last report is that Mark Blundell, who is here at the track, will be fit to run in two weeks at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And of course, that means Roberto Moreno is available, and that set off all kinds of rumors all up and down the paddock. Roberto Moreno stepped into a very difficult position. It's hard to come in after the season started without any testing, without the relationships developed within the team. He has done an outstanding job elevating both he and Mauricio Guzman with every race. This race, he started in fifth position. He's running strong in that position. He's been a real boost for this team. Michelle Jordan Jr. has been reported out of the race. Transmission problem. And that's a bit predictive of this racetrack. Transmissions, half shafts, CV joints. If a team didn't go thoroughly through those last night, they should not expect to make it to the end of the field today. Not suggesting that that happened in the case of Michelle Jourdain Jr. because even if you are as precise as possible, this track will still beat those parts into submission. This track is extremely bumpy. In some places, the cars are in the air for a long period of time. It's difficult for the drivers to figure out exactly when to turn or to accelerate because they have to make sure all four tires are planted back on the pavement. And it'll shake just about every part on this car loose if given the opportunity. Back at the front with Montoya, who steadily pulls away from second place Jill DeFerrin, Jan. 
and his team owner, Chip Ganassi, at the start of the race, went up to Gilles DeFerrin's team owner, Derek Walker, came up and shook him and said, hey, what's your strategy today, brains or luck? Well, covering for us today in the pits, Jan Bikas and Rick DeBruel. Gary Gerald is on assignment in the booth, of course. Parker Johnstone is alongside as we watch Montoya. There is some reports from the corner workers and the cores. And remember, many of them here are volunteer to be able to put on an event of this magnitude and size. Well, there are reports that there is some light sprinkles on some sections of the course. So we will check that as well. In fact, here at the start finish line at the broadcast facility, there is a couple of drops beginning to show on the front window. Field comes through over the line, completing the 11th lap. Now the report comes in from turn three over alongside Lake Erie that there is moisture being recorded there. Rick DeBrull? Just want you to know, very light rain in the pit, but the important thing is, look at the tire they just put on the pit wall. They just moved the slick off. They put the rain tire up. They're checking the pressures. They are getting ready. Don't know for sure if it's going to be a factor, but they have to be ready for it. That's a sign, as you see. Ken works the tires in the Newman Haas pit, making a final check on the air pressures on those rain tires. And you ride on board with Christian Fittipaldi. It's the back section of the course. Paul turns seven and eight. They're just over 3.2 Gs here. It's one of the few places where the drivers can get into concrete as they come off that corner. It's off camber, sucks them right down into the wall. They're at 185 miles an hour, hard on the brakes, down a couple of gears into this quick right-left pit chicane. Max Pappas just ahead. 175 miles there coming down into the principal passing and braking area of this course. Turn number one, 150 feet wide. <laughs> 160 miles an hour at this point, approaching turn three on the brakes. Watch the bumps through here. They have to be very careful feeding the throttle back on. During the onboard run, I didn't see any evidence of any rain there. But Michael Andretti, he's still up at the front, runs in third. Rick DeBrule report from their pit. Word from the team is that Michael Andretti is having radio problems. Apparently, even on the grid, they were out there trying to work with it. They can hear what he says, but he can only hear them intermittently on the track. Where that could become an issue is if they have to tell him to come in and take change tires, they're not sure they can get the word to him at the right moment. If he decides to do it, he can say it. But if the team, because of something going on another part of the track, decides to call him in, he may not hear. Robbie Gordon fell well behind on the start all the way to last place and is now working his way up, is in 19th position. Montoya still leads it, followed by DeFerrin and Andretti. Back at the Burke Lakefront Airport, Cleveland, Jimmy Vassar just got around Cristiano D'Amata for 11th place. Only change in the top 20 that has occurred since lap six. We're now on lap 16, and you ride with Juan Montoya, who has five seconds over second place, Jill DeFerrin. You can see the moisture starting to accumulate on the onboard camera there. It won't affect the grip level until there's a significant accumulation of moisture. The drivers won't lift or alter their line in any way until it starts to get a little worse. Rain comes out now as umbrellas go up at the start finish line and you can see evidence of rain on the camera of Juan Montoya. You can also see that Elio Castro Nevis is back in the fight, can't you? Back here, here is a battle that has gone on constantly for the past couple of seconds. Christian Fittipaldi leads it now. Oh, Robbie Gordon, who fell all the way to last, loses it but keeps on the racetrack. The battle has involved Pampas, Fittipaldi, P.J. Jones, Robbie Gordon, and Mimo Gidley. Christian Fittipaldi, when he made his pass, got into 16th place. You now ride with Richie Hearn. He's right behind Gidley. Brian Herta, who spun on the first corner and had to wait till the field come, it would come through, is just behind Richie Hearn. Let's go to the pits, Jan Vikas. Well, the first driver out of the race is Michelle Jordan. What put you out? 
Well, first in the start, like when Brian spawned, somebody just died in front of me. I had to break and lost a lot of positions. Then when I was trying to pass my mobility, I ran a little bit off track. And then when I was in fourth, when I tried to go into third, the third and fourth broke. So that's what yeah, they, so it was a gearbox problem. It's a shame because the Ardesla Mexico car, the Lola, was very, very good. And we had a very competitive car. So it's a shame. I think we could have got a very good result today. So we just have to keep working hard. OK, guys, I think that may not be the first or may not be the last, I should say, gearbox problem we'll see today. And obviously, since we did mention it, that when he jumped those tires in that cone and pulled them out to the track, the safety team was able to get all that out of the way without going to the full course yellow. Keep in mind, Brian Hurd is in the middle of this fight. He spun in the opening lap, so he's not a factor in this fight as of the moment. You Hurt know, I take actually, that back. Actually, actually, part of the battle. He's, he's now caught back up. So he is. Gidley, yep. He is fighting for position here. That was a real quick recovery after that first lap spin. And theoretically, it'd have to assume that he would be substantially faster than the cars around him, owing to the qualifying positions. The Ray Hall team's always been very good at Cleveland. They're able to get the shock damper combination working very well so they can still produce maximum grip while still riding the bumps. Those two things are sort of in opposition to each other. You want the car low, you want it stiff so that the underwing makes as much downforce as possible, but you need it soft to ride the bumps. Oh, Franchitti suddenly Detroit slows down. Well, listen for the two-way, but Franchitti just suddenly pulled offline, slowed down. Engine appears to be running. Cable snap. The cable snap. Okay, we hear you. I think he said the cable snapped. I wonder if he has a throttle linkage problem. Because you can see the waves of heat at the back of the engine, which, of course, will stay there sometime even after the engine's down, but it looked to be running, and that may be the throttle. Stay there, we're going to tie you in. Stay there in the car, we're going to tie you in. Juan Montoya remains the leader of the race, though he's started to overhaul some of the rest of the field. Clear sailing in front of him right now, but Jill DeFerrin sits 2.2 seconds behind, so he's nibbled a little more off. And on the previous lap, Montoya had turned the race's quickest lap, but on that lap, DeFerrin came back and went four tenths of a lap quicker. So DeFerrin now on the charge. We know that he came in first at Portland. He was using the most fuel, the fastest of the front runners. It looks like they've adopted that strategy again for Cleveland. Best fight is right here. Andretti trying to hold off Tracy and run through traffic at the same time. This is the traffic that Montoya has already cleared. Tarso Marquez just ahead of him. Again, he is in the Lola, the second Lola at Penske. No Penske car on the track this weekend. Jan Bikas, uh, the problems with the other Lola, that one driven by Elio Castro Neves. What's the story? And surprisingly, another throttle-related problem. He said the throttle is down. He did not elaborate more than that, so that is, that is a rare problem to have two in a row with Franchitti and then also with Elio Castro Neves. So Franchitti, Tracy had it yesterday. Didn't count nearly as much having it then. Andretti around Tarso Marquez. Tracy now to work him. When we talk how rough this track is, you're talking about springs and tires, gearboxes and half shafts. Are you talking about throttle cables too? Absolutely. It sounds like in Franchitti's case, we had a throttle cable break. From the description that Juan gave us with Cash Nevis, it sounded like the throttle return springs broke so that if he was at full throttle, it wouldn't return back up, which could be a really big problem around this track. Jill DeFerrin, second place. And his crew has called him in. He's whittled it down in three laps from two and a half seconds to right at two seconds as he heads into the pits. And you can see that many of the other teams are laid out as well. We go to Jan. Yes, Max Pappas is just leaving. Many of the teams are starting to set up. Jimmy Vassar will be pitting in front of Gilles DeFerrin at the same time. They're expecting to make no changes, just slap some tires and fill it up with fuel. I'm taking a quick look at the tire wear for Goodyear. At this distance, it looks pretty reasonable, so that's a good sign. Waiting for fuel. That's a nice one, just over 12 seconds, 12.5, and here's Vassar. 
So that was perfect for DeFerrin because he beat faster before he got here and locked him. A little problem with the right rear. In fact, there's a what nut in the middle of the racetrack. Let's hope he has all four of those nuts on there because there's one loose. Sure runs down, retrieves it. Of course, they usually carry one, if not several, spares on their belt should the lug nut drop out of the wrench when they're making the change. Juan Montoya stays out. Michael Andretti assumes second place, but nine seconds behind, and he will make his stop. Here comes Michael. Makes his turn on the pit road. Rick DeBrule is waiting. Indeed, they're bringing him in. Got him all set up on the line. Moments ago, they had the rain tires out on the wall. As you can see, obviously, they are staying with the slicks. They're going to go ahead and change all four tires. No changes that he needs from the team. They're happy with the way the car is running right now. Now it's just a matter of getting him back out and doing battle, getting all the fuel in, getting everything disconnected, and sending him on his way. 12.2 seconds. Ed Nathman, the team manager for Michael Andretti's Newman Haas Racing Team, yells reset into the radio to reset the fuel flow so he knows how much fuel he has used. Though of late, some of those fuel flow gauges have not been as accurate as some of the teams would have wanted. Montoya stays out yet another lap. When he comes across the line, he will have completed 30. And the strategy is unfolding, Paul. If DeFerrin came in at the end of the 27th lap, obviously he's got to make a total of three stops to get to the end. If Montoya can stretch it out a little further, maybe play off a yellow, he might be able to make this a two-stop race. Well, Jan Bikas, what do you think about that possibility? Oh, well, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Remember, we were joking about what Chip Ganassi said, brains or luck. Well, it may come down to that today. And it looks like Ganassi, at least for Montoya, might be going the luck route. In other words, trying to do it in two stops. Both the players' cars on pit road. And Montoya will be here next time. Rick? Well, there you've got Patrick Carpentier. He's already made his change. He's getting out right behind him. Greg Moore going out. Very quick stops. i got to say, they changed Greg Moore's engine overnight because they were just a little concerned this afternoon because they were a little concerned about a little vibration they have. Well, we wait for Montoya to see how far he can carry the car. His teammate Jimmy Vassar stays out. Montoya heads on the pit road. Target Chip Ganassi team is ready to go to work on this car. All the way down at the other end. That's straight in. Jan Bikas is right there. And there's one other concern, and that is just a moment ago, it started to rain here. We had a bit of a shower. And they okay, zero the fuel, turn the limiter off. When they zero the fuel, that Tires means that... on, you ready? Go, go, go. 12.3, when he's telling him to reset the fuel, that means that it resets a counter so they can see, in fact, if they could make it in two stops. The other thing we heard there from Chip Ganassi was telling Juan to turn the limiter off because they're the last pits. They want to make sure that he just goes right to full speed because they can go out of that pit exit very, very quickly. So this car, Roberto Moreno, takes over the lead of the race. Boy, what a great ride he has had. Certainly he is going to be well rewarded. Pit speed violation for Michael Andretti. They've ordered a drive through, so he's been in, now heads back out. Talking about Roberto Moreno, though, what a nice replacement job he has done for Mark Blundell, and I hope that's noticed by somebody. Boy, look how Michael gasses it to get back on the course. And that's what we talked about earlier. You can come out of the pits faster than you can exit turn one. We saw how that worked to Michael's advantage. And now Roberto Moreno makes his stop. And that will put him the last of the leaders to have stopped. Montoya will reassume the lead of the race. Well, Mark Blundell has joined us in the booth watching Roberto Moreno. Good stop for him. Up into the lead for a while. He's been doing some good racing. Yeah, very good stuff. Always seems when I'm with you two guys that um, Roberto's always doing very well on the racetrack. So I'm not sure I want to come up in the commentary booth too much longer. Well, you know, you're welcome up here. I've heard you've had an interest, and in, uh, and this is a fun place to watch the race, don't you think? No, it's an extremely good place, and uh, Moreno's doing an outstanding job. He's, he's committed to the team. The team have gelled with him very well, and uh, the sooner he gets out of my car, the better. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard anything about possibilities for him once he's out? Uh, I haven't, but, you know, after this well, job, he's done. 
Rain starts to come down. Excuse me, Mark Blundell. Michael Andretti comes in, and they are going for rain tires. Rick? Indeed, snap decision. Michael said he wanted the rain tires. He came in. He considered it last time, but this time they had to do it. Got him in quickly. Got him back out. The idea is not to lose too much on this one. Jan Vegas. Jimmy Vassar has also laid out his rain tires, and now we see Juan Montoya has decided to do the same thing. You know, it is not totally wet down here on pit road, but for a few moments, we had some big, big drops, and now it's starting to see somewhat. So this is a very tough time to decide if you really want to go for those rain tires. Report from the course is Jill DeFerrin spun. The rain's starting to pour right at the pit road and looking around the course it begins to envelop the entire racetrack and montoya is here getting oh, his rain call. tires you hear chip ganassi and now we're getting a major like downpour this place will turn into a skating rink it's an airport for all but two and a half days a year it's very dirty very slick it's so easy to lose control here on slicks even on the rains we mentioned jill deferrin going off course well, not off, but certainly not on line. Out at the east end, he's now made it back to the pits and goes for his change as well. So with that once again, Roberto Moreno has picked up the lead again. P.J. Jones also had his problems and got off course. You can see these big paint stripes for the runway markings. They're very, very slick. And as he rolled back in for turn number seven there on throttle, it just turned the car right around. So Roberto Moreno is now the leader of the race. Mark Blundell, the driver of that car. I assume you're coming back at Road America at Elkhart Lake in two weeks. I hope so, certainly. But uh, this is going to be a tricky situation here for Moreno because the track is very slick, as Parker was saying. A lot of airplane fuel dropped on the surface and um, he's going to have a job keeping this on the road. Comes Robbie Gordon, who actually is able to move past them, but you've got combinations of tires out here. Oh, Herta comes out, has to stab the brakes for a second. Oh, and now Kanan in one of the target cars into the barrier coming off the east end. It looks to be Jimmy Vassar. Yeah, that's the fast corner, turn number eight. Oh, we've got another car in, one of the Penske cars. That's Tarso. Tarso Marquez comes in there, too. Adrian Fernandez gets through. Jan Bikas, can you update us on Jimmy Vassar? I can. Remember I said he was going to come in and get rain tires? He did not. He was on slick tires. That's the reason for Jimmy Vassar. Couldn't get in here in time to get those wet tires. Well, the rain has turned from a drizzle to a deluge, and Roberto Moreno remains in front of this field despite the deluge. Montoya who came into the pits, came back out in second place. We've got cars off course all over the place. Here's what it looked like just seconds ago. Paul, the problem here is that this is the fastest corner on the racetrack. There's a big dip at the exit. It's incredibly slick, even in good conditions. And with this rain on slick tires, it's impossible to control the cars with any speed at all. Those slicks allow the cars to aquaplane instantly. That's Tracy now, doing a quick 360. Everybody's running off the course. The Farron comes off. We did have a report that Moreno was off. And Christian Fittipaldi spun it in the pits, Rick. Indeed, he was bringing it in, got almost to his pit, and then simply spun it around. Now they're trying to bring the back end around. It's unfortunate because Christian is one of those guys, he loves to drive in the rain. He was actually thinking this was going to be his big chance before the race if it would rain. In fact, his crew says he's one of those guys, when they go out and test, normally they don't go ahead and test in the rain. He's always going, can I, can I? He's just so smooth, he's good. But now they've got to work in a very tight space, and I'm not even sure they're going to be able to get the left rear tire off because it's so tight. Yeah, they squeeze it, they manage to get it off, but now they're going to have to go put everything back on, and it's going to be a long stop. The double yellow flags go out. That means full course caution. The safety car will go out, and maybe all of this confusion will take on a pattern. But with everybody back and forth on different kinds of tires trying to switch over to the reins, Montoya has reassumed the lead of this race, and now he's on rain tires. Back at the card, Grand Prix of Cleveland, still raining, still under full chorus yellow. In fact, they expect more rain. We'll give you the rundown as it stands right now with Montoya as the leader. A couple of things to point out. Al Unser Jr. now up to fifth. Robbie Gordon, look at him there in ninth. Remember, he was a lap down on lap 33. That's just five laps ago. And also, Brian Herta has moved up and now runs in 10th place, despite the fact that he spun off on the opening lap 
the opening corner of the opening lap and fell all the way to the back of the field. But when the rain came out, well, it became chaos on the race course. The subject of our Toyota Spotlight. These cars are very stiffly sprung to stay as low as possible. The track's very bumpy. It gets wet. They get on the paint. They go through the bumps at the apex. Here in turn eight, there's a big pool of water right where the drivers come through. And if they're on slick tires, it turns into an unlimited hydroplane. Look at Christian Fittipaldi. Do you know how slick this surface is? I expect Christy Yamaguchi to be doing triple toe loops past him, Paul. <laughs> Let's go to the pits. A very wet pits in Jan Bikas. Yes, and a very wet Jimmy Vassar. And unfortunately, a big hit for you. What happened? You know, I, I, I bucked a pretty good start in the race. It's moving up a bit. And uh, then, um, you know, it started raining down there. And I, I was going to come in for tires. And we discussed it with the team. They were ready for me. But it was my call to stay out one more lap. Because the last time through before I came in, it, it wasn't raining down there anymore where it was before. I thought. You know, maybe it was just a brief shower. The skies looked a little bit bright, and I thought I'd give it one more reconnaissance lap before I, uh, before I, and then it was just really raining. So I decided I'm coming in, and I came into that turn eight down there, and I was going about 20 miles an hour, and it just, I needed a rudder more than anything. It wouldn't even turn at all, and uh, just, it's just all flooded, and just went straight in the wall. And guys, as I'm sure you can see, it's raining even heavier now. Rick? Uh, Mauricio Guzman, another one of those people who tried to gamble. Your spotter was saying, ah, I think it's going to dry out a little bit, and you stayed out. Yeah, he did that, but it's very hard to judge, judge when it's a thunderstorm. If you look around, there is some bright spots. And I tell you, I think my car just sucked a plane on the floor because I was almost going straight and felt like a hoover on the wall and just sucked my car in and both suspensions on the left were damaged and I'm done. I think this thing now is a typhoon. I think they're going to black flag, uh, red flag this thing. Not much you can do. You said the only guy's going to win out there is the pace car. The way it is, I don't think these cars can run. They're very low on the ground. And uh, if you get a lot of water, you have guys spinning on the pit lane. You don't complain with the tires. You're complaining with the floor of the car. So that's undrivable. Unfortunately, Mauricio Guzman out of this. Jan? Dario Franchitti, another one out. But you were out prior to that with problems. What, with throttle cable? Yeah, I think the throttle cable snapped. The guy said it was losing throttle um, angle before the start so basically the full power is getting less and less and then it just snapped let go coming out the last corner so we cruised to a halt very frustrating because this is exactly what we needed this weather you know in the wet we've always been always been quick and uh, we're looking forward to, to going to the front there's a lot of drivers that wish they weren't out there this guy wish he was Jimmy and Dario both their second DNF of the season we've got a very expensive parking lot beginning to build outside of turn eight we'll be back with more as they continue under full course caution Look at the rain. It just pours here and now begs the question, how long will the officials continue to run the cars around the racetrack? And what will be their criteria before they bring them off? As yet, they have not made a decision to remove them. Uh, we'll keep track of what's going on with Chief Stewart, Wally Dolan back, and race control. We go to Rick DeBrule. Well, Tony Kanan is sort of a double victim of the rain, first because you spun in it, but you couldn't get into the pits because of the rain. Yeah, Rick, I couldn't come in because I had a Michael ahead and a Christiana was a big spray and I was really slow and when I saw the pit entrance it was already too late and I couldn't break to stop and come back otherwise I would have spent I had the slick tires fortunately uh, was you know was a good race until I pray for the rain for so long and when they come here I am so you didn't have the right tires on when it finally happened you said you were only going 20 miles an hour when you spun no, I probably even that you could you could pass me with the bike but uh, you know unfortunately the luck is not on my side right now we have to turn that you know around and we'll see I just hope my mom doesn't you know get really upset with me because she's gonna call me and you know give me a hard time Tony's worried about his mom now yeah, I hope he doesn't try that uh, 20 mile an hour line with a highway patrol Race fans are a very, very special breed. Look at them. They, they stay in here almost no matter what. Umbrellas are up. If you don't have a raincoat, you certainly can find a garbage bag and stick it over you. But they are sticking in in what is a deluge. And on the racetrack, well, this is Richie Hearn's car, though you can barely tell. And it gives you an idea of how hard it is raining. And also, he has to contend not just with the rain, but the blowback from the car in front of him, the spray off the tires coming up in his face. We go to Jan. Elio Castro Neves is one of the smarter drivers here. He decides he's going to stay inside the timing stand to talk to us. Elio, unfortunately, a couple of big problems today for you, engine related. Well, unfortunately, it's not only today, but the whole weekend. Um, again, uh, the team was doing a superb job in setting the car. And I don't know what happened. The car just. Uh, I stop on the back straight and uh, well it's a lot of uh, miss uh, uh, 
happenings all the time, but uh, that's racing. If you get a let that go down, you're going to be down. So go for the next one. Hellcard Lee, we're going to take them. You like driving in the rain. Do you wish your car was still running right now so you could slip and slide out there? Oh, yeah, I wish. I was, I was dying there. I can't believe it. But, hey, that's racing, and I'm sure the next one you're going to do it again. Another guy who loves to drive in the wet. You may, in fact, have noticed while we were talking, Delio, the uh, sky actually cleared. We're going to show you a couple of these incidents that started when the rain really began to pour. That's uh, Elio's fifth DNF in the last six races, unfortunately, for him. And as the rain continues to pour, we're at 41 laps complete under the full course caution. Well, under the rules, at 51 laps, we would have a legally complete race. As yet, we've heard no information indicating anything from race control, but <laughs> two-way traffic. But the good news is that the sky cleared even while we were doing that interview with uh, Elio Castroneves. Not cleared of rain, but certainly the sun came uh, out in one section of Cleveland. There's actually blue sky off to the west. So we'll see where this all takes us in the next few minutes from the CART Grand Prix of Cleveland on a very, very wet afternoon by the Lakeshore. Earlier this week, the drivers got together at the Hard Rock Cafe located here in downtown Cleveland. The building's filled with memorabilia for music, history, images of legends like Le Lennon, Bob Dylan, Cobain all on the wall. Drivers got a special treat when Cristiano D'Amata sat in on a blues jam session. I'll pick that thing. He's now with Rick DeBruel. Well, indeed, Cristiano D'Amata singing the blues down here. Another one of the victims. You were on your way in when you suddenly went sliding. Yeah, we took the risk. We wanted to stay one more lap out, but unfortunately, it got too wet. Uh, there were big pedals on the last uh, turn six and seven. I got in chocolate plane and just clipped the wall, broke the twin to out bar. That's the end. Now we're talking about how is this track going to dry? Let's say it stops raining, the guys keep driving around. You think it will dry out very quick, or how big a problem are those puddles that are left going to be? There, for an airport, there are many more pedals than I would imagine there is out there. And I don't, maybe if it stops raining in five or six laps, that should be okay to start racing again. For everybody, unfortunately, but Cristiano D'Amato. And the good news is that it has, in fact, stopped raining out on the west end of the racetrack. It's still sprinkling in the rest of the area. The sky has lightened drastically, and the intent of the race officials are to do everything that they possibly can to get this race back into action and underway and run to the completed distance. 43 laps are complete. 100 laps is the scheduled distance. And to take a look at this coming into this race especially look down at the end there at Elio Castro Nevis 926 laps complete he's led five races and he had a 16th in the points that's been one of the strengths of team Ganassi over the last few years Paul is consistency and the ability to not have any mechanical failures for the drivers not to make any mistakes in the past it's always been Bobby Rahal who's been the champion of laps completed this year it's been Christian Fittipaldi one of the best seasons he's had he's consistently been at the front been able to bring the car home and that'll pay dividends at the end of the season and the man we're calling the Iron Man now Christian Fittipaldi has completed every lap calling the Iron Man because he's actually training for that he was back at uh, Colorado Springs in Colorado training uh, with the Olympic team getting ready for an Ironman competition. Carl Haas's biggest concern is that he would be a little too tired to compete this weekend. Christian told me that the guys are in great shape, but what amazed him is their ability to train from early morning to late in the evening. He said their endurance is incredible. He learned a lot. He's glad to be back in the race car. Well, the picture that we just gave you off the back of Juan Montoya's race car is not as representative. It's a lot darker there. Of course, it cameras sitting down in between the two rear tires which are throwing up quite a bit of spray the reason we showed it to you is that the chief steward has radioed the pits and asked that Juan Montoya give him his opinion of the uh, racetrack what needs to be done and how soon it will in fact be ready and your guess would be well, it looks like it's ready to go now, Paul. A lot of the rooster tails are, are starting to subside. That's one of the keys that the teams look for and the drivers look for as to when to switch back to dries. Now, they won't switch back to slicks for quite a while, but certainly now that the rain stopped, I think they should be ready to go green. And when and uh, what to switch to, that may be the biggest decision left in the day, huh? Well, that is true, but why we have the opportunity, let's take a look at two different types of rain tires. First of all, we have the Goodyear pattern, which is asymmetrical. It actually has a radius to it, and you have it offset somewhat, a pretty aggressive 
very different sort of rain pattern. We'll walk over here to the very next pit and take a look at a Firestone. It's just over our shoulder here. You can see this is not as asymmetrical. Very straight cut, two different ways to go about channeling water. And I think for the first time this year in racing competition, we will see how these two fare under very wet conditions. Rick DeBrule. Just want to talk about what this is going to do to fuel strategy now. The issue being so many laps under yellow, how many laps is it going to take? Now, just talking, for example, with Adrian Fernandez's crew, they're saying they're going to turn it up. They're figuring they need two more stops. They just want to go ahead and do it. I think they want to take the strategy that uh, DeFerrin used last week. They're going to power their way to whatever they do. Well, the report that came back from Juan Montoya is that the straightaways are in pretty good shape. Of course, they're uh, they're crowned heavily because they are an airport, but there's still quite a bit of water in the corners, but it appears we're going back to racing. We'll be back. Well, now the officials say that we are very close to a restart here at the Burke Lakefront Airport. In two weeks, uh, we'll be at the Texaco Haviland 200 with coverage on ABC Sports. That's from Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Alan Sir Jr. expected in shortly. Rick DeBrule. Just proving that you can't plan for every single thing that's going to happen. Al Jr. is having a problem with his visor fogging up from inside. I said, well, why don't they simply pop it up so it unfogs it? It's glued down. As a result, they're going to have to bring him in. They brought out his spare helmet. They took the visor off it. And now when he comes in, in addition to topping him off, they're going to go to work on the helmet. See that? They're pulling the visor off. They've got to replace it as quickly as possible. They got the new one. They're putting it in place. And then they're going to send him back out. And he says he's been trying to figure out some way to get his hand up in there, but he just couldn't quite do it. So now they go ahead, they, they take care of the visor. It's not an easy thing. It's not a quick thing, but it's something they felt they had to do. And it was a big battle as to whether to change the helmet, just change the visor, what to do. But indeed, they've got him done. Now they send him back out. I don't think I've ever seen a speed wrench taken to the side of somebody's head. Allen's a junior back out now. We've kind of talked about many of the different problems that the rain causes and points that have to be overcome. Perhaps you can kind of run down the list. They'll be coming back to green here very shortly. Well, with the open wheel cars, of course, without the fenders, the spray is enormous. It's very difficult to see if you're a trailing car. But with the humidity that we have today, it's very easy for the visors to fog up. Normally, the drivers will crack them open. There are ratchet mechanisms on the side of the visor, so you get them open a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. That's the first time I've ever heard of a visor being glued down in place. And of course, if you're anticipating rain, if you're a driver, you use anti-fog on the inside of the shield. This is something that racers in Europe have to deal with often, often in South America and also in Europe, uh, in Japan as well. Normally, they don't have to worry about it too much in North America, but on a day like today, if I were driving, I would be prepared with anti-fog, a lighter shield than the normal dark one you would run. Very unusual circumstances. It dropped them out of fifth place all the way to the back of the field. Well, the skies over the race car, of course, are right now clearing. We'll be coming back to the green flag. The one thing that Montoya will not have to deal with is the spray off of other cars. The actual order will be Montoya, Tracy, DeFerrin. That's the race order when they come back to green. Andretti is in fourth place, and Carpentier is in fifth. Montoya here is Chip Ganassi. Tell him that it's green. He saw that. Got a car spinning well in the back there. Well, it looks like Robbie Gordon may be off course. Yep, that's Robbie. As he came onto the pit straight, lost it, spun off onto the grass. Well, he's a good off-road driver. He'll be back on the track in a minute. Montoya pulls away. P.J. Jones was lined up directly behind him. Paul Tracy is the... Uh, is the next in line in the race because he just jumped out and around Jill DeFerrin. Michael Andretti is right there too. Carpentier just behind him. We can hear on that. Here comes DeFerrin. PJ spun, but DeFerrin is back now working on Paul Tracy and he gets around Tracy. Tracy's coming right back at him. Tracy tucks up under his wing. Tracy comes swinging to the outside. DeFerrin takes a straighter line into the corner. Wide course, you can use a lot of different ways. Rain changes it as well. Michael Andretti is also right there. This is a battle for second place. It's also a comparison between the Goodyear rain tires and the Firestone rain tires. DeFerrin's got lots of rain experience as well. Very quick right left here. Tracy lined up behind DeFerrin for second. Michael Andretti watches Tracy onto the pit straight. Montoya 2.7 seconds ahead. Michael comes out and around. 
Tracy comes right back at him. Watch the drag race as they come out of this corner. Michael try to apex later. Tracy holds the inside. He does a good job of not allowing Michael to get a run coming off the inside of the corner. Boy, and in some, races, some, some sections of this racetrack, the spray is still a little unbearable when they come through where it still stands very wet. As they're coming up on P.J. Jones, who is off the course there, it's a local a yellow area, no, no passing in that section. Yeah, you can see how wet the taxiways are here. Very difficult for the drivers to try to judge how much grip they have because it's changing from every section of the track. They get onto the runway sections, it's dry, but they've got the paint right there. You can see the threshold markings, which are still very slick. They get back on these taxiways. They're standing water through the apex there in turn eight. Also at the exit, you have to change your judgment and how much speed, how much grip you've got from section to section. This is the most difficult condition a driver faces is a drying racetrack. You see the interval from Montoya back to currently second place, Jill DeFerrin. Paul Tracy sits in third, and just behind Tracy is Michael Andretti. So we'll ride with him and watch it from that driver's perspective. And Paul, it's going to be up to the driver to make the call to go back to slicks. Now, they might get some advice from the pit lane. What the guys and the, the crew guys are doing now is they're watching the lap times of the other drivers. But at some point, someone will blink first. They'll come into the pits. They'll change to slicks. They'll carefully monitor their lap times. Because what will happen is everyone will be running within a second or so. The first person that goes to slicks and comes up to speed, they'll gain two, three, four, five seconds left. Then everybody will dive into the pit lane and make the change back to slicks. Patrick Carpante with Adrian Fernandez chasing him now. Ellens, or junior pass, Pruitt, Herta, and Moreno. The first lap after the restart now runs in eighth place. Rick DeBrule. Well, you got to talk about the strategies associated with this. Ideally, what the teams want to do is they'd like to keep those yellow, the, those rain tires on until they come to their fuel window. If they pit right now, it means they're still going to have to pit again for fuel. So they're kind of hoping that the track stays wet just a little while longer. Then the question comes, do they go the full distance or does it become a time race when they hit the time limit? And now Carpentier and Fernandez are closing down on Carpentier's teammate, Greg Moore. Moore currently sits fifth. And the race is beginning to tighten. Yeah, as the track drives past, Use your slots at your discretion. And you tell us when you want to ride tires. That's exactly what I was talking about, is they're going to leave it up in the hands of the drivers, especially the more experienced drivers. You'll see them starting to look for puddles to try to run these tires throughout. Oh, Christian Fittipaldi Fittipaldi spins off. has gone off, but they'll look for puddles trying to run the car through there to keep these tires cool. The rain tires are very, very soft, and if they run them hard on dry asphalt and concrete, they'll start to come apart. So they'll start weaving down the straightaways, looking for wet sections to dry these tires, to cool these tires off. Christian Fittipaldi off now, but he was pushing it pretty hard. He was the fastest of all competitors last lap. See the local yellow position there going into the chicane, coming onto the pit straight. There's a puddle there. They want to mark that, so they also have out the yellow and red course condition flag. Tracy chases DeFerrin. No contest there. Here comes Michael. We'll watch as the field comes through. Here's a little bit of a fight with Moore and Carpentier. Fernandez just behind them. And then Unser Jr. 54 laps complete. And you can see as Patrick came off a of turn one there, Paul, he didn't use up all the exit. That's where all the race rubber is. It's very, very slick until it dries out. He's actually pitching off the corner to get as good a run as possible. With 54 complete, it is now a legal race should the rain hit too hard once again to run all the way to the 100th lap, the 210th mile. Christian has managed to get back going. He's coming out in front of his teammate, Michael. Lots of variations in line, probably more so than we see at any other circuit. The driver's hunting for grip. You can see they're not using all the road. They're coming off that turn number eight out towards the concrete. In qualifying, you could put a feeler gauge in between the left rear tires and the wall. Not so now in these conditions. 
more Carpentier. They continue at it. Now here comes Carpentier. Tucks right in behind Moore. He's going to look to the inside. Will he, break? he goes to the inside. But nope. He loses a bit when he does so. But we'll see where the apex comes. Boy, exactly what you described, Parker, as Carpentier makes the move. And you can see Greg may have gotten a little distracted watching his younger team. Well, I don't know if he's younger now. They're both. Oh, here Look comes at this. Moore right back at him. They go side by side into the next set of switchbacks. Still side by side. Fernandez behind him saying, you know, let's see what these two are going to do before I get up there. Now Fernandez closes. You're watching down from the Honda Helicam. Fernandez tried to tuck his nose under there for a second. Back to a series of right-handers. Fernandez closes again. And every lap, Paul, they'll be experimenting, trying to see where the guy in front's a little quicker, maybe altering their line. You can see still they're not letting it out to the edge of the road there. Adrian Fernandez trying to pick up the draft from Greg Moore. Greg Moore darts all the way to the right behind Carpentier, his teammate. Carpentier into the corner. Still standing yellow over at that corner. Looks like Adrian's going to try to make the move down the inside here. Well, he certainly saw it work earlier. See if he can pull it off. Down to the inside. Makes the turn in early. And for the second lap in a row, you can see how white Greg Moore went there. Where, where was Greg going? He went right off the end there, Paul. We saw it earlier when Patrick got around him, and now the same thing with Adrian. It's like he just missed the breaking point on the outside as he was being overtaken. So there is Carpentier now fifth, and he, well, he got back, but he got back several spots back. He lost it at least down to eighth place. There's Carpentier, Fernandez, Allinger Jr., Scott Pruitt, then comes Moore, Herta, and Roberto Moreno. That's where the fight is. We're back at the front, where now DeFerrin is closed in. In fact, DeFerrin is right there. Back to the pit straight. <laughs> DeFerrin's going for that inside line, too. He's got it. And DeFerrin goes into the lead. That was great. You could see Jill move to the right, then he moved to the left. And as Montoya took his line back to the outside, DeFerrin ducked back to the inside. Great, great strategy there from Jill DeFerrin. A very nice setup. Jill DeFerrin looks still at how much water they have to contend with. If you get very much offline, you can get into some pretty big puddles. So that brings up the question, how long do they wait now before they go back to dry tires or do they? Well, Paul, they've got to extend it at least another eight to 10 laps in order to make it a one, uh, the race in one more stop. It's drying out a lot. I would think at this point it would be quicker on slicks, but they don't want to give up that track position at this point. They'll extend these rain tires for as long as they can, and there's still a lot of water back on these taxis, taxiways, as we can see. DeFerrin with Montoya. Tracy is third place. He's separated by almost four seconds in this battle for the lead though he's able to come out around. So with DeFerrin out in front, Montoya in second, Tracy third, Michael Andretti is fourth. Paul Tracy and Michael Andretti battling for third place, catching Montoya while they're doing so. There's Montoya right behind him, Tracy. Robbie Gordon came into the pits, got some fresh tires. He's back out, but he slowed down, spun. He's gone over. The report is to the dry tires. The question is, when will everybody else? Well, Montoya's car has gone really loose, Paul. He's used up those rear tires. Tracy and Andretti are catching him rapidly. Watch the back of his car as he turns in. It is very nervous. Michael Andretti looks for the inside line and tries to get off the corner faster than Paul Tracy. Montoya just ahead. Now Andretti switches back, takes a wide sweeping exit to the corner. This will give him a nice wide arc as he comes into the chicane next, but not enough to get him past Paul Tracy. Carpentier has headed into the pits. He puts on slicks. Let's go to Jan Bikas. Well, one of the guys that's watching that carefully is Derek Walker. You're seeing other people go for slicks. When will you go? Uh, Jill will make that call. He can he can tell what the track conditions are like. We'll watch what everybody else is doing. But right now we're the quickest car on the racetrack, so we're going to sit tight for a minute. How many lap warning do you think does he have to give you? 
Oh, he can pretty well call it just off the last turn. We're ready either way, so uh, it's up to him. You've done a lot of wet weather testing for Goodyear. Is it the durability that's helping you with the Firestones wearing out, you think? Well, they certainly look like they're falling off the pace. Well, Paul Tracy makes the move on Montoya and goes into second place. Rick DeBruyne will continue to watch this battle, but what do you have? Just wanting to update the situation on Michael Andretti. A little bit earlier, he was saying that his tires were starting to blister. He was concerned about them. And for a moment, they said, OK, come on in right now. Then they decide to wait out another lap. And once again, they're leaving it up to Michael, letting him make the decision. But he's definitely seeing that where he's saying it's time to come in. And as I look up and down pit road, more and more guys. Adrian Fernandez. I see Roberto Moreno's team getting ready. Carpentier, you just mentioned, it has already been in. Everybody's starting to make this move. Oh, with Michael around Montoya, nice little drag race over on the lakeside straight. Adrian Fernandez comes in. Those are slick tires that he has mounted up. So Fernandez in at ninth position back into the fight. DeFerrin still the leader. Michael fighting at every inch of the way. We watched Michael swing out wide while Montoya went to the inside. He's looking for water to keep these tires cool. Right in front of him is Paul Tracy. As Paul comes off a of turn eight, you'll see him move back to the right side looking for water. Now watch Tracy swing back looking for pools of water to try to keep those tires cool down. Michael's looking to the outside as well. There you can see it there. Jill DeFerrin heads for the pit. So does Montoya. So pit stops by the front of the field. DeFerrin the leader. Let's go to Jan. And you know why we were talking to Derek Walker, you may have seen it in his face. He got the call why we were doing the interview that Jill DeFerrin wanted the dry tires. And we should see Juan Montoya stopping on this lap as well. 9.8, and let's see how, and here comes Montoya right afterwards, so we know that Jill DeFerrin should keep the lead. And now we will see what happens in the tire exchange to drive Firestones for Juan Montoya. Whoa, boy, that was quick, 9.7, but sound just a tick slower than what we saw for DeFerrin. But of course, in that keeping of the lead, Tracy and Andretti stayed out, and Tracy was able to, uh, to uh, take the lead for a second but then Michael Andretti gassed it, and now Michael Andretti is leading the race. Still the question of tires here. Paul, right now, Michael and Paul are running 113 second laps, one minute and 13 seconds. Patrick Carpente, one of the first people with Robbie Gordon to go out in slicks. Well, Robbie on that lap just turned a one minute, eight second lap. So he is five seconds a lap quicker on slicks. Everybody will be coming in now with that sort of advantage on slick tires. Everybody except Michael. Tracy heads for the pits. Michael Andretti stays out. Now, mate, right on the mark now. Right on the mark. Wet in the pit here. A little wet. Barry Green talks to Paul Tracy on the radio. You can see him at front wing there. Wheels are done. Long, long refuel. And Barry Green obviously not happy about it. Fittipaldi is in. Roberto Moreno just behind him. So here's the question. Michael Andretti, you would expect next time around he should be in. And trying to get on slicks as well because being on the reins now just not paying off. It really isn't. When you're losing five, six seconds a lap, you can't afford to stay out. He's got to come in this lap. You can see the wall on the left side. If it gets closer, he's coming in. And he is coming in, Paul. Michael Andretti, the last of those on rain tires to stop, now slows it to, speed limit. Slows it to 50 miles an hour. And Rick DeBrule waits. What's the speed limit? Hold the slow down. Slow down, man. Hold it down. All it, right. It's interesting reset because... Reset the fuel meter. Reset the fuel meter. He was one of the first guys. It's only about 15 gallons. Okay, hold on. Hold it. Stay there. Stay there. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Just wanted to listen in there. It's interesting because he was one of the first guys to report the tires blistering. But think about this. He's just a lap further into his race, into his fuel window. Maybe, depending upon the circumstances, he might be able to go the distance. And Rick, talking about circumstances, I felt a couple of drops of rain down here. Wouldn't that be wild? <laughs> no, no, it would not. It might be wild on the race course. Oh, Fernandez catches the wall off of eight hard. Yellow flags there not yet full course yellow it's very difficult to come out into these conditions 
on slicks. It's hard to get them up to temperature, and if you catch any water at all, it'll turn the car right around. Making this transition from rains to slicks is very, very difficult. Now they do go full course yellow. Little fire burns itself out in the exhaust pipes there. Earlier, this was the situation. Greg Moore and Gualdra Salas, both of them were able to continue on. With Montoya stringing right yeah. through the middle of them. Montoya got an eyeful of that, didn't he? And there is Greg Moore as he moves back to speed. But look at the nose of the car. It's battered in. And Fernandez, the safety team, is there. Here's how he got against the wall. This is entering turn eight again where we've had all the problems today. There's a lot of water pulled on the inside. You can see, we, we couldn't see it start, but I'm sure as he crossed the apex and hit that water, it turned the car around. We'll see if we can see it here. There it is. And a big puddle right on the inside, right off the edge of the line on the apex. And that did some pretty serious damage to Adrian Fernandez's car. So now we're back to full course caution again as Greg Moore climbs out of the car. Jill DeFerrin is the leader of the race. He will be the leader ahead of Montoya, Andretti, Tracy, and in fifth place, Al Unser Jr. will be back. And the green flag comes out with Montoya trying to move to the inside of Jill DeFerrin. Michael Andretti is in third. Montoya for the moment has first place. But here comes DeFerrin ducking to the inside. Drag race off of the first corner as we go back green. Montoya pulls him through this section. DeFerrin moves to the inside. Right-hander just ahead. Michael Andretti closes. Montoya pulls away through the first set of chicanes. Onto a straightaway now. He pulls away further. Michael begins to threaten DeFerrin. Remember the problem we've got here is that the Firestone tires come up to temperature more quickly than the Goodyear's. It's going to take Jill a few laps to get on an even footing with these Firestone shod cars. In the meantime, he's got Michael Andretti all over the back. Oh, Michael, Michael, big moment there. As there Tracy goes Tracy by. gets him just with that one quick little mistake. You can see it's still very wet in some sections of the course. Michael comes back after Tracy and gets around him. Back in pursuit of DeFerrin. But Tracy's still right there. And take a look just behind him. Robbie Gordon sits there. He just got around Carpentier for sixth. And Al Unser Jr. is there still. Jr. sits in fifth. Gordon works on Jr. He's got fifth. Oh, Gordon is suddenly on fire. He's trying to get through this field and doing it. Now, as they do this, why is Robbie Gordon running so hot as Al Unser Jr. comes back at him? Why are they going at each other at lap 69 like this? Jan Vikas, what are they saying in the pits? What they're saying is that they have known for quite some time this would be a timed race. Cart doesn't say it officially till about 10 minutes to go, but Derek Walker and company are saying they figure this will be about an 88-lap race. So that's what they're figuring in the pits, as yet we have had no official notification from Cart Control, but there is some logic to that. 69 laps complete, so these guys all see it as the end game in this race. Robbie Gordon's been driving the wheels off this car since the green flag. He's been off a couple times, but now he's making a move on Paul Tracy. Gordon works on the inside of Tracy, and he gets Tracy. What an outstanding drive. And on the previous lap, when he got side-by-side -side with Al, he made a little juke to the outside just to make it stick. Look how Gordon moved up through the field. Tracy now works on Gordon. Al Unser Jr. is there. Tracy to the inside of Gordon. Whoa! Oh, and Gordon cuts him off. On the outside, very, very difficult, especially with the water that's still on the off the racing line here. But if you want a guy who is spectacular behind the wheel and has no problem taking risk, it's without question Robbie Gordon. And look at Brian Herta now. You get a glimpse here. Here comes Al Unser Jr. There's Brian Herta. Remember, he fell all the way to last. He now runs seventh. At the front, still Montoya. There's DeFerrin in second, Michael in third. Let's go to Rick Rule. 
Well, Greg Moore, we're trying to watch the monitor. This is a great race going on right there. But we don't talk, we don't talk about what you put it, put you out of the race. Uh, we had some kind of exhaust problem where we broke a header or something like that, and you know we were, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but um, you know I guess this wasn't our day today. We had some, we were really really fast laps there in the dry, and then it started to rain, and you know we just kind of lost it, and it was, um, you know, it's disappointing we had something like that because if we kept going, we would have burnt the car down. So it's better to park the car and uh, you know go on to Elkhart Lake where we know we got a good shot of winning. Time to move on to the next race. Herta charges on Unser, gets past him. They almost touch wheels. Unser lights the brakes going into the corner. Now Herta looks at Tracy. Herta set that up as Al tried to attack Paul. Herta got a really clean exit coming off of turn one, was able to out-drag race him and then outbreak him into turn three. Robbie Gordon is not yet in contact with Michael Andretti. That'll start as a battle for third, probably very quickly here. Montoya still the leader to Farron in second. There's Tracy, or there, there's Herta as he chases Tracy. What a great recovery for Brian Herta after that opening first turn spin. He's charged from the back all the way up to sixth place now. And Robbie Gordon is having a great day currently in fourth, Jan. He certainly is, and remember, that is a Toyota power plant. And last year, they struggled on road courses where you had to use a large RPM spread. But they've worked all winter, they've worked hard on this engine, and obviously, in these conditions, it means Toyota has made big gains as far as throttle response. Heard it along and inside on Tracy, and he gets, oh, he had him! But then he lost him because he lost the back end. Tracy comes back at him. Very close competition here, heading for the left-hander. Drag racing down the east end. And Herta takes him, but Tracy is coming right back. That is absolutely the exact moves we saw between DeFerrin and Zanardi only a few years ago. Cleveland's one of the only road courses where you can have that kind of side-by-side -side action, waiting for the other man to blink first as you dive down into the corners. And that brought Unser and Carpentier forward. That battle took a little bit of time. And as a result, Al Unser Jr. is sitting right there. So is Patrick Carpentier. Roberto Moreno is behind them. Michael Andretti now closing on Jill DeFerrin at the front of the field. Well, for the moment, it's stabilized just a little bit as we take a look back to Herta's move on. Tracy slides across his front and then back. We'll be right back. Paul Page with Parker Johnstone, Jan Bikas, Rick DeBrule in the pitch. No changes since we left you, and we are going to carry you right to the checkered flag now. Montoya is the leader to fair in second. Michael Andretti in third. Robbie Gordon, who is up on Andretti's drop back a little bit. He lost a little bit of time on that last lap. Right now, Montoya is the quickest man on the track at 63 seconds flat. Gordon had fallen back to a 65 second lap. He recovered a little bit more on that last lap across the start finish line. Every lap, they're going to pick up speed. The driver that can judge the condition of the track the best and take advantage of it without making a mistake is gonna come out on top of this thing. Every lap, they've gotta push, see how much less is left in themselves in the car, try to see how fast they can slide the car through the water. Very, very difficult conditions. And we did have the report from Jan Bikas in the pits that uh, the crews are assuming it's an 88-lap race. We're at the 75th lap. As yet, we have no official confirmation that it moves to a timed race and would end at approximately 88 laps. We still wait for that information. DeFerrin with Andretti in pursuit. Montoya now about six tenths of a second quicker than DeFerrin Andretti, but he's catching traffic. It's exactly what DeFerrin and Andretti need to try to make up the deficit. Straight away parallels the Lake Erie shoreline, just about 150 feet off the edge of the track. There is Gordon, and Herta comes to the inside, tries to get around him. He's got him. Herta takes Gordon, now Tracy works on Gordon. Oh, 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 those two together could be something to see. But they race well side by side. Brian Herta coming through the field. Now fourth, Al Unser Jr. comes around Gordon. Maybe there is a problem for Gordon. Carpentier would be the next one to try and get him. Hold a second, wait to see if that happens. Jan Vikas, you want to give us an update? 
Yes, I can. On Brian Herta, you're wondering, where did he come from? Remember, he spun in the first turn of the first lap, and they say that he was hit from behind. There hasn't been any problems with the car all day. He was fast in the warm-up, and they just wish that hadn't happened because they said they could run for the lead. Let's go to Rick. Well, the word from Gordon's crew is actually he's got no problem. In fact, they're pretty darn happy. The only problem they said they're really having is that the radio isn't working. They can talk to him, but they can't hear him. Although, to a certain degree, they were saying maybe it's better that way. But in terms of the performance of the car right now, i got to tell you, Gordon's crew is really happy. 77 laps now complete. 23 to go, assuming it goes to the 100th lap, 210-mile scheduled distance. The pit crews have not made that assumption. They assume it's going on time, and we'll just, in a few minutes, get that 10-minute notification and start counting the last 10 laps of the race. Well, as Robbie starts to fall back, Paul, I think as the track dries, it'll be a disadvantage for him. He's in his element when things are difficult. And we're seeing, except for this section of the track, it's getting quite dry. And I think that's going to hurt Robbie as the race progresses. Oh, you can see a big tank slapper, Robbie Gordon. Roberto Moreno right behind him as they come out of turn eight. And Michael Andretti slows over on the front stretch. Michael Andretti was third. Does the car come back on power? No, Herta is beginning to close. Michael Andretti came off at the last corner and slowed. Rick DeBrew? According to the crew, they say on the radio, he thinks that it is a possible gearbox problem. That's what they think it may be. He was doing fine, not a hint of problem up until that exact moment, and then suddenly, boom, he's in big trouble. Robbie Gordon came into the pits after that lap and now heads back out. The Andretti problem is only going to whet the appetite for Brian Herta in fourth. If he sees that car with any hint of disability, he's going to attack with everything he has. There he is, Herta right behind, then Tracy, then Unser Jr. Walter Salas right in front of Michael. He's going to want to try to get this past them before they can get, the, get to the chicane. Otherwise, he'll have to follow him through and lose time to Brian. Michael does get the pass then. Back at the front of the field, this is Montoya, and as you can see, He's beginning to run through some traffic. Jan Bikas. Yes, I can update you on the length of the race. Derek Walker said 88, but in the meantime, I've checked with Montoya's crew. They say they think 90 to 91 will be the length of the race. So the teams are guessing and trying to outguess race control. Montoya handles up P.J. Jones, one of the slower cars that he needed to get out of the way and behind him. Race control has just said on the 79th lap, this is officially a timed race, 10 minutes from about, no, oh, 15 seconds ago. So, crews played it right. They went for all they were worth. Now they have to just flatten the throttle not worry about anything and try to get to the end. Rick DeBruel. Just wanted to update the Robbie Gordon story. Apparently he had a tire go down. One of those things happened suddenly. That's what brought him in. Ruined what was a great day, although he's still not too far back, all things considered. Well, fortunately, it, when that happened, it looked like it happened over in the east end, and he was able to get it on pit road pretty quickly. We saw him slide the car all the way out to the wall in eight. Great car control by Robbie Gordon. Dove into the pits, got a change. Paul, with 10 minutes left, these guys are driving as hard as they possibly can, but from races in the past at Cleveland, we've seen it go down to the last few laps, and then all heck break loose. Cars having mechanical failures, guys running into each other. We'll see if they can maintain this pace and consistency to the checkered flag. What a good ride this is for Al Unser Jr. and his new Lola that he started in at St. Louis at the end of May. He's right there working on Paul Tracy. His teammate, Tarso Marquez, who is out of competition now, but also moved over to a Lola for this race. And as these cars pick up speed, as the track dries out, we're more likely to see a mechanical problem as the cars are punished over these bumps. Montoya's position over second place, Jill DeFerrin, has remained at 5.2 seconds the last two laps. Tracy right behind him, and Unser Jr., and then Carpentier. Rick DeBrew. Standing by with Adrian Fernandez, who was a late rain, rain victim out there, correct? Yeah, we were doing pretty good now with the, with the dry tires, and uh, you know, it wasn't completely dry, but it was pretty good, and unfortunately, I just dropped a wheel 
where it was a little bit wet into, I think, the side of turn eight. And uh, that was it. That put me into the wall. You had a great run going up until that point. Exactly. No, we were running strongly. And, uh, you know, it's what it takes. You need to finish to be able to get some points. So th this time didn't work, but next time we'll get him. Now he's sitting in the pits, guys. Montoya, Robbie Gordon just ahead. And traffic going to be his problem now. We'll have the Winston Cup from Sears Point as soon as this race is over. Whoa, everybody likes the break there. In fact, we'll take you right to Sears as soon as the checkered flag comes out. Will it be for Montoya? This race has often not been decided until the last lap. And with traffic in front of Montoya, that's only going to add to his woes. As fast as Robbie was running before the pit stop, Montoya probably would like to have anyone else but Robbie in front of him at this point because DeFerrin has now brought it from just over five seconds to 3.7 seconds on that last lap. So DeFerrin's closing in. The guys behind him are driving extremely hard as well. DeFerrin's going to have to get around P.J. Jones, which is no small feat. On the 78th lap, he was at eight seconds and 77, 7.8. And look how he's whittled it down last time by at 3.7 seconds from first place Montoya back to Jill DeFerrin. He's got to get around P.J. Jones. Back onto the pit straight. Can see the advisory move over flag being given to Jones. He pulls wide. DeFerrin comes to the inside and comes forward. We're looking for Herta now. Here he comes. Paul Tracy just behind him. And just behind this, Unser and Carpentier also running very close. And it looks like Michael Andretti is not having any further problems with his gearbox. He's maintained about the same cushion back to Herta. But Tracy pushing Herta very, very hard at this point. And if you're waiting for the Winston Cup race from Sears Point, you will not miss the green flag. Got this all figured out. You'll see the checkered here at the end of the card FedEx Championship Series. And then we'll send you right out to the West Coast for Winston Cup. The officials counting now at five and a half minutes to go in the race. Montoya to Ferrin. The interval has extended to 5.9, almost six seconds. This will give you a look at the interval. He's through. Here comes DeFerrin. DeFerrin is the one now with slower traffic in front of him. Michael Andretti, he's struggling with those gears, but he's still able to stay in third place. We can see Montoya got around Robbie Gordon. Probably Robbie letting him by, knowing the position with a leader behind him because Robbie was running as fast as anybody on the racetrack. Just being a professional, letting the leader through. Interval widens out first to second. DeFerrin now seven seconds back. Still focusing on Brian Herta and Paul Tracy. That fight is for fourth. see how wet it is still on this section of the race course. They still have to be very, very careful. They're running about a second and a half to two seconds slower than they were in the opening stages of the race. And it has to be primarily because of the water still standing down in turn eight. Yellow flag being shown at the start finish line. Robbie Gordon spun going into the first turn. And got going again. There you see Robbie pulls away. DeFerrin had to drive around Robbie Gordon maintain his second place position. The interval widens 8.2 seconds. Montoya is driving away. I'm going to show you the full field as it sits right now. Eight cars on the lead lap. Good runs especially by Alan Zer Jr. and by Mimo Gidley come in there and collect a point for this race. Moreno again with another great run, replacing Mark Blundell, who kind of hedged it a little bit when he visited us up here in the booth. He said he hopes to be back in two weeks at Road America, but it didn't sound like he was all that sure. As you mentioned, great run by Memo Gidley in his second outing in a champ cars, picking up a couple of points if he can get it to the end. This track is very difficult to learn because it's so flat and so wide. There are no visual references. It's difficult to learn this track and get into a rhythm. Tarso Marquez, Gidley, and more importantly, Juan Montoya, first-time visitors. 
You saw Herta as he ran off course. Back on. Tracy got by. Now little Al gets by. Now Herta gets back up to a full steam. But Al Unser Jr. stays past him. Carpentier comes in behind him. So does Moreno. You will not miss the green flag for the Winston Cup race. They are holding for you. We'll get this one done in just a very few minutes, and then we'll send you right out to the West Coast. Two minutes. Now counting to the end of this race. It switched from a 100-lap run to a timed race because of heavy rain showers, thunderstorms in the early going. Long period of caution. And then on rain tires, they went back to racing. And finally, as the track ride had to switch over to dry tires. Juan Montoya looks like he's going to do it again. A 9.6 second lead on second place, Jill DeFerrin. But remember, the racetrack, the airport, has been beating this car at every corner. And the car must survive to the end. The question now is not so much whether or not Montoya can keep it there, it's whether or not the car will stay under him. No indication that there's anything wrong with that machine, but you have to consider the fact that it's been punished, and the punishment has been brutal. In Montoya's favor, the Ganassi target team has had remarkable reliability over the last few years. Montoya making so few mistakes during the course of this season. Very, very tough mentally, very consistent, and very aggressive. A difficult combination to obtain at best. Now, obviously, because we're going to run right to the end of this race and then switch you out to the West Coast for Winston Cup, the winner's interview will not take place here. That's just a factor of time. But it will be later on RPM tonight. Next time by, Montoya will see the white flag. One lap to go, next time by the line. DeFerrin is nearly 10 seconds back. Andretti is about a second and a half back from DeFerrin. Here comes that whole group. Al Unser Jr., Brian Herta battled for fifth. Tracy's managed to pull away in fourth. There's Tracy. Carpentier is, though, still very much part of this fight. Rick DeBrule. Just want to update the situation on Brian Herta. Apparently, he almost got into contact with Gidley. That's what caused him to go off. The reason he was so slow was just getting stuff off the tire and getting back, back up to speed. Nothing wrong with the car, just a problem with getting back up to speed. Montoya through the first turn for the final time. Looking very strong. What a brilliant drive once again for Juan Montoya. He's conquered street courses, road courses, airport circuits, ovals, all in his first year in champ car competition. What an amazing young man he is. Tremendous car control, some of the fastest hands and reflexes I've ever seen, which has been echoed up and down the pit lane. Very disciplined, very focused. Montoya works the final set of turns on this race course. Just one chicane separates him from victory. DeFerrin will come across the line nearly nine seconds later as Montoya slowed slightly down. Winston Cup is next. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, and the gang standing by. Great job today, pal. Great job. You're the man. That was a hell of a job today. They and the Chip fans. Ganassi congratulates his driver as Juan Montoya scores his fourth win of the year and extends his points lead. And it's the third win in a row at Cleveland for Chip Ganassi and his team. DeFerrin is second, Andretti third, then Tracy, Unser Jr., Herta, Carpentier, Moreno, Robbie Gordon is ninth, and Richie Hearn is tenth. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Juan Montoya tastes the fruits of victory as he has completed the run and won a rain-shortened race at the Berkeley Lakefront Airport. He takes both the extra point for pole and for laps led, takes the win. There's the unofficial results. Let's send you back to Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons. Juan, what an awesome race for you. Congratulations. But tell me, it looked like Gilles DeFerrin was faster in the rain, but you were faster in the dry? I think the Goodyear tire were really good in the wet, you know. Parson did a great job in the slick tires, you know, we're a lot quicker than them. But it got wet. When it started drying out, the, set, the way we got set up the car, it doesn't work for rain. And I tried moving the bars, I tried moving everything, and 
the car wasn't drivable. So I decided just to try to go early for the slick tires, but not too early because, you know, I, I knew that Frank Kitty was out and it was good points. So when I got the slicks and I just started pushing like I, I killed, basically. Do you ever think to yourself, I didn't think it would be nearly this easy to win this much? Well, it's not easy. Believe me, we're trying really hard to win. No, I think we made a, I made a good job on cold tires, and normally I've done that quite well, you know, getting a good advantage on cold tires, and that was about it. Congratulations. Thank you.